Hey, Bill 1911 here. Um, today we're going to take a look at a Smith & Wesson Model 10. Okay. This gun has been around a long time. I've owned it for many, many years. This was my uh, on-duty pistol. Okay. Uh, years and years and years ago. And we actually had to buy our pistols. Okay. They didn't give them to us. We had to purchase them. All right. So, the first thing we're going to do, as always, is verify no ammunition in the gun. Okay? We're going to check that. And then we're going to just take a rag and clean up the outside of this gun. All right? Just get off as much as we can of anything that's on the outside of that gun. Okay? Now, there are some places on the cylinder here that you get a lot of buildup of... Uh, powder and stuff like that. So we're going to try and make sure we get everything as clean as we can. Now this gun, as I said, has been around a long time and it's got a lot of scratches on it. Uh, it's it's really been through the mill because like I said it was, a, it was a, a workhorse. I mean this wasn't something that I only took to the range on Sunday. This was a, a, a regular carry piece that was in my holster all the time. So as a result, it got a lot of scratches. It got a lot of beat up. So it's not in perfect condition, but this gun still shoots very well. It's a good shooting little gun. So now on all revolvers, there are a couple of places that really pick up a lot of filth. Okay, they just they just genuinely just get dirty. Okay, the one of the worst of them is right up here in the throat of the barrel. Okay, right in this whole area. What happens when you fire the gun is small amounts of gas will escape between the barrel and the cylinder, and they'll take with them burnt powder residue stuff like that. So. This area is prone to get dirty, okay? So we're going to clean that area. And since it does have burnt powder, we are going to use our powder solvent, okay? This is a military product. Um, I'm familiar with it. And it was pretty darned inexpensive. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to get this area wet down with my cleaning solvent and try to work it into as many as little corners and places as I can get it into to get as much of those deposits out of there as I can. So I'm going to use a screwdriver to kind of work it into those little corners because it's hard to reach them. All right. And we're going to get as much out of there as we possibly can get out. All right. Now, the one thing I want to remind you of is that a gun is a machine. It's a mechanical device. And like all mechanical devices, they need to be maintained. You know, I mean, you change the oil regularly on your car. So what's, it's not that big of a leap to say, well, maybe I ought to clean and lubricate my gun once in a while. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This is kind of important. If you're going to carry a concealed weapon, okay, Make sure, well, if you're going to carry a weapon at all, make sure that you clean that gun at least once a week because you'd be amazed at how much gets down into the action of the gun when you're carrying it. Um, I mean, just all kinds of stuff gets in there. Um, body hair, uh, sweat, just everything in the world will work its way down into that gun. So, as you can see, I'm not done. And I got a lot of dirt out of that area of that gun. So we're going to do a little more of that in that same area because it's particularly bad, particularly filthy. <clears throat> Last time I shot this thing, it wasn't very long ago. Actually, it was about a week ago. And um, I don't think I cleaned it as thoroughly as I should when I brought it home. So we're just going to try to do a little better job in here on this. All right. There we go. All right. 
So, another area that gets dirty on this is right around the front of this uh, cylinder. This gets a lot of the burnt gas that's going to come out and plaster all over everything in here. So we're going to want to work on that and get that cleaned up. Okay, that powder solvent will dissolve it, but sometimes you need to put it on and give it a minute or so to let it work. Okay, so it's not going to hurt to leave it on there for a few minutes. Okay. You know, one of the hardest things about making these videos is remembering that it's not as important that I see what I'm doing as it is that you see what I'm doing. So sometimes you'll see me fidget with the gun a lot to try to get it into a position where we can both see me because I have to work on it and you because you need to know what I'm doing. All right, so we get all that cleaned up as best we can. Okay, and we're going to get inside the frame in all the nooks and crannies that we can find here too. And we're going to get as much of this clean as we can. Okay, we're going to clean the top strap. All right. Now, sometimes you might hear the term back strap. Okay. This bar across the top here is not the back strap. The back strap is actually this part of the handle right down here. Okay. And this goes back to the days of well, the 1858 revolver, they had a, a brass strap that came down here. The grip was actually solid, okay? There were two screws that mounted it on the top and two screws that mounted it on the bottom, and that back strap went all the way around that handle. You slipped the handle inside that strap, okay? And then you bolted the whole thing onto the gun. So it was a different way of doing things, but that has stuck all these years. This area of the gun is called the back strap. Okay. This is the top bar or top strap. All right. So a little history. Sorry about that. I kind of like that kind of stuff. But sometimes it's easy for us to think that our audience knows what we know. Well, sometimes you don't. So sometimes I need to take the time to explain things like what is a back strap? Uh, what is a top strap? All right. So once we get this cleaned up like that, there's another area that I want to point out. And that is right here is a piece called the ejector. And what it does is push your cartridges back and out of the cylinder after you fired them. Okay. So behind that, right in here. Things get, get pretty dirty, so we're going to get in there and try to clean this up a little bit. Now, there are some sharp corners on this, so be careful when you have your finger in there, okay? You don't want to hurt yourself. But you want to get in there and get some of that junk out of there and make sure it's as clean as you can get it, okay? Take a look. All right. Now, this one's fighting me a little bit, so I'm going to use a cleaning brush, all right? Now, this one is purpose-built for guns, okay? It's, it's got a very narrow set of bristles on one end, and the other end kind of looks like a toothbrush. So, you can use a toothbrush to do this with, an old toothbrush, but just remember, don't put it back in your mouth because this solvent will kill you. It is poisonous. So, we're going to get in there, and we're going to try and get this cleaned up. Now, remember, we got it wet with the solvent before, so it should be pretty easy to get it out of there. All right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to do the back here. And we're going to go ahead and go back around the front of the cylinder just one more time, just to make sure that we got it nice and clean. Okay, there we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now we're going to do the insides of the chambers and the inside of the barrel. So 
Try and keep a rag handy with you when you're working on these things because it really comes in handy after you put that solvent on there. Things can sometimes get a little bit slippery and awkward to hold. So just don't be afraid to wipe it down with your rag. Many, as many times as you need to. All right, so come here, Patch. We're going to wet our patch. Now, when I clean these things, I like to use a jag, okay? This is a cleaning jag, all right? See this little point on the tip of it? That is used to mount the patch on the rod, on your cleaning rod, okay? And it just kind of holds it in place when you put it through, all right? So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get things wet. Okay. Okay, that's the first chamber. Now, you want to keep track of which chambers you've done and which ones you haven't. Now, the patches I use are what's known as double nap flannel. Okay, in other words, they have like a fuzzy texture, okay, on both sides of the material. So, for me, this is advantageous because I just used one side of this patch and pushed it through and cleaned one chamber. Well, now I'm going to take the patch and I'm going to literally kind of turn it inside out and use the other side that has not cleaned the other chamber. So, these are very absorbent as well and they'll take a lot of junk out of your gun. So, we're going to go to the next chamber and we're going to push that patch back through. Okay. Now, we've done both sides of that. So, we're going to get another patch and we're going to wet it again and do two more chambers until we've done the whole thing. Okay, now that we've uh, put wet patches through all six of the chambers, now we're going to repeat the process, but we're going to use a dry patch. What this is going to do is any of the material or uh, solvent that is in that chamber, okay, is going to be picking up dirt and loosening it up. So now this clean patch is going to finish the job and get this all cleaned up. And we're going to do the same procedure. We're going to take the patch off, turn it inside out, go to the next chamber. And we're going to keep getting fresh patches until we finish doing all six of the chambers. Okay, now that we've dried all of the chambers and they're nice and clean, we're going to move on to the barrel. Okay, now the actual inside of the tube is called the bore. All right, so... What we're going to do is we're going to take another patch and wet it and use the same procedure that we just used on the cylinder to get the barrel clean. Okay, we're going to wet our patch, mount it on our jag, and stick it through that barrel. Now, there is one other thing I want to show you on this cleaning rod. Okay, this conical shaped device, okay, it's an important device. What this does is protect the rifling at the muzzle of your barrel. Okay. Otherwise, when you stick your rod down through there, you're going to be banging a hard stainless steel rod against this rifling. Okay. And you can damage it. Now, the two areas that are most critical to accuracy on a gun is right here at the muzzle, what they, what they call the crown of the barrel, and right back here at the opening of the barrel, okay, or the throat of the barrel. So we're going to kind of try and protect those areas as best we can. So we're going to take our rod and we're going to get it started, okay? Sometimes they don't want to go real easy, like this one. But we're going to make it happen, okay? And we're going to get that cone right into the muzzle of that barrel like that, and that's going to protect it as we push that rod through, okay? So we're going to do the same thing that we did before about turning the patch inside out and using both sides. Uh, that gives us two passes through that barrel to loosen everything up. Okay, like I said, we're going to use the same procedure. So we're going to start it in there, okay? Get that cone started in the barrel, okay? And we're going to push it through. All right, 
So that's got our barrel mopped or wet with solvent to get the deposits out of it. So again, the same procedure. We're going to now use a dry patch and get it dry. All right, so turn it inside out, do the other side. And other than the powder solvent, that's that brown color that's around there, okay, this barrel is coming out very clean. So that's, that's a good thing. That's what we want. We want it nice and clean. Okay, so from here, it's time to inspect the barrel to see what kind of job we did about getting it clean. So, what I'm going to show you is that if you look down this barrel, okay, it's real hard to see through it because it's pretty dark in there. So, what we can do is we can take one of these patches and kind of use it like a reflector you see, to put light back up through that barrel so we can see inside. All right, you can see what, how, what a big difference that makes. All right, so that's exactly how I'm going to inspect this barrel. Stick that white patch in there so I can reflect light in it, and I'm going to just look right down that barrel, and it looks nice and clean. Okay, excellent. Well, now I see a little bit of a deposit on one side. So I'm going to show you another tool that we use this is called a bore brush all right now if the barrel comes clean with a jag quite often I don't bother to use the brush so let me get the right size here and right here is the right one okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to simply take off the jag and screw on our bore brush okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of material on the end of this brush now this brush is a brand new one it's never been used before if you've used your brush don't do what I'm about to do I'm going to stick it right in the can and get a little bit of solvent on it okay if you've used that brush before and you put it down into that can, you're going to contaminate your whole can of solvent. So you don't want to do that. And that made a mess. But, all right, we're going to use our cone. And we're going to just simply push it back and forth. Okay. And we're going to get that barrel brushed out. Okay. And my big fat arm is in the way and you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. So we're just going to pull it all the way out and put it all the way back. Now, make sure that you take it all the way out, okay? Because what happens is if you change directions when it's in the barrel, it will actually bend the bristles and make the barrel, the brush too small to use in your barrel. So push it all the way through, okay? And then pull it all the way back and take it out and then put it back in again. And that's how you use your bore brush, okay? So after that, since we had to do it twice, we're going to have to go through the same thing with drying the bore. Okay. And after we get it dried up again, then we're going to have to inspect it again and see if we got those deposits out that I saw that I didn't like. So, back in we go again. All right, now that did a good job. And how do we know? Because it was coming out pretty clean before on the last patch. And as you can see now, hey, we got some darkness out of that. So we got a little bit cleaner on that one. All right, now we're going to turn around to the other side. So we've got two passes through that barrel. Okay. And now we're going to inspect the barrel again. 
and see how we look. Same procedure with the patch, reflecting the light up into that barrel. Okay, all the deposits that I saw from before are now gone. So that did what we wanted it to do. We're nice and clean now inside that barrel. It's also nice and dry. So if it's dry like that, that can be a problem for the longevity of the barrel. We want to put some oil down that barrel to make sure that no rust forms in there. Okay, we don't want the inside of our barrel to rust. So, you know, like I said, this gun is very old. Um, I've had it for, well, more than 40 years. I've owned this little gun. And by keeping it well oiled down that barrel, that the rifling on that barrel still looks like it was brand new. Okay, so we've got our patch oily. We're going to stick it down the barrel and get that barrel oiled up. Come on, get in there. Okay, so come on out there. All right, that's that. Now we've got the barrel oiled. Now you can re-inspect your barrel and when you look down in there after you've oiled it that barrel will look very shiny inside and it does which means you got a good coat of oil on it all right so now we're going to lubricate the rest of the gun okay the cylinder spins on a pivot right here so we're going to want a little bit of oil in there where it spins Okay, let that work through, spin it around a little bit. I'm going to use two drops, it feels a little bit dry. Oh, come on, get in there. You Get in there. There we went. Okay. The ejector rod, where it pushes through, we're going to want a little bit of oil on that rod on both ends, okay? All right. So that's got the cylinder oiled up. Now, there's another place that I'm going to show you, okay, let me get my, my little pointer here, okay, right here, this is a gear, okay, now, down inside a slot that is right here, I hope you can see it, okay, this little slot right here, okay, there's a part in there called a push paw. Okay, and what that thing does is it engages with this little gear and advances it every time we cock the gun. It advances that cylinder one position. Okay, just pushes it around just a little bit like that, okay? So that's what that push paw does. Meaning that we're having two pieces of metal come together and push against each other and that is an area where you're gonna get extra wear. Things are gonna wear more. So you're gonna put a little bit of oil in each one of those little cogs, okay? Once you've got that oiled, sometimes you get a little much in there, so you can just clean up the excess. It's not a big problem. You're also going to want to get a little oil in the other end, down in that slot where that push paw is. So you're going to put a little oil in there. All right. Get in there. You didn't go inside. Now it's in. All right. So right here on the barrel is a little nub of metal. Now this little nub of metal has actually got a spring behind it. So this moves. All right, so we're going to want to put a little bit of oil in there. Just a drop, all right. On the other end, right here, is a little silver dot right in the middle. That also moves, okay. And those are both part of what supports the cylinder, okay. The cylinder has a pin now sticking back into the frame on that end and up here into this lug on the barrel so that it's supported on both ends and can spin freely on that pinion, okay? Okay, in all these little places where we've got metal that's going to rub together, we're going to want a little drop of oil in all those little places. So I like to put one right here. And since that part's kind of a tight fit, I'm going to push it down a little bit so that oil works its way inside. Now, that little button is actually attached to the release handle. And if you see, you can move it just like that. 
see that little button in there moving in and out if I can get the light just right okay just by manipulating that handle right there okay so this arm where it moves again it's moving part so whenever you got metal to metal you're going to want to put a little drop of oil in all those places all right got a little much but that's okay we can wipe off the excess won't hurt a thing all right now on some smith and wessons like this one okay they actually have a firing pin that is built into the hammer itself right here you can see that firing pin okay and they are delicate believe it or not just by dry firing it just by going click 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 you know like that and over and over and over again clicking it okay when it comes to the end of its run and it slams down sometimes the little ball that's on the end of this will actually snap off and just go flying out the end of the barrel once that happens you have no firing pin and the gun will not fire so do not dry fire these things in other words keep clicking it without something for it to strike against because that little ball can snap right off so the other thing I wanted to show you is that when you've got the trigger pulled all the way back you see how far forward that hammer is now as I slowly release the trigger you're going to notice that it actually retracts the hammer back out of that firing position okay it's actually pulling it backward okay so when your trigger is forward if you have a round in that top chamber you can't bang the hammer and set it off it just won't let you do that there's a bar that comes up and blocks the hammer unless you have that trigger pulled all the way back nice little safety device okay so um, on all of these I always recommend that you get some oil on your release mechanism the reason why is because if that freezes you've got no way to reload the gun you've got no way to open the gun up to clean the gun once this freezes up so make sure that you get some oil on that now on that firing pin we talked about it actually moves a little bit so whenever you've got metal it moves you want to put a little drop of oil on it let it soak in there a little bit okay so we're going to lower the hammer okay put your thumb on it and hold it as you pull the trigger okay we're going to want a little oil on both sides of the hammer in here let it run down in okay and that's about it we're going to do the trigger the same way we did the hammer but we're just about done with this puppy okay get out of there you okay now on occasion with these things you're going to need to probably take it to a gunsmith and have him do a deep cleaning what is a deep cleaning well in the deep cleaning we're going to take the side plate off of this gun and clean out everything that's down inside this area of the frame okay that you can't see from here and can't reach okay that needs to happen yeah once in a while okay if you feel a gun feeling like it's getting stiff or isn't isn't working the way you want it to take it in have them clean it up check it out okay but one of the things I want to remind you to do is get yourself a little screwdriver that'll, that'll hit these little screws and just periodically check them make sure they're tight because sometimes they do actually come loose okay you're also going to want to check the, the screw on your grip now I want to caution you don't over tighten that screw because it can actually split your grips break them inside the grip okay which I'm going to go ahead and take off and show this to you okay I'm going to unscrew a little screw and take it apart okay inside that grip there is a little piece of metal okay and it's embedded in the wood okay right here so if you over tighten these grips you can actually pull that piece of metal right out the bottom of the wood and break the wood and ruin the grips so make sure you don't over tighten it all right if you've got it down this far and if you want to put a little drop of oil on that spring on the end of it it's just fine to do that it won't hurt a thing okay and that's about it 
So, there is one more screw right here that I'm going to just double check, make sure it's on the frame, it's, and it's tight, it's snugged up. So we're going to put our grip back on, okay, and we're going to put the screw back through it, and we're going to tighten it down, but we're not going to crank on it. We're going to snug it up. Okay, two fingers on the end of the screwdriver. Just snug it up, and that's really all you need. If you go any tighter than that, you run the risk of damaging the grip. So that's the Smith & Wesson Model 10, my old service revolver from a very long time ago. Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, don't forget to like us and please subscribe. And by all means, come to visit us at askbill1911.com. Also, I want to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. So please, don't try any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. If you are under 18 years of age, do not try any of these topics without the express permission of your parent or guardian. Thank you.